Hey everyone, Simon here from Top Time Training, and in this video, I'm going to show you a simple trick to get more power on your one handed backhand. Now, if you ask most one handers around the world what they'd love, they'd say, I want more power on my one hander. Now, generating power on any stroke, doesn't matter if it's a serve, if it's the forehand, or if it's the one hander, requires more racket head speed. Now where most players are going wrong on the one-hander is the preparation phase. Players that really struggle to generate power, if you look at their take back, a lot of the times their racket is level with their grip when they're preparing for that one-handed backhand. So they're taking the racket back and the racket head is level with this grip. So from here, all they have now is a very limited space to actually accelerate, to actually speed up and create that racket head speed. Now it's the same as the forehand. If I want more power and I'm swinging from this position, the distance for my racket to travel is very limited, so the racket head speed will be very limited at contact. Exact same principle on this one-hander. If I'm starting with my racket down here, now to accelerate it's very hard for my body and I only have a very short, I've only got a couple of feet to accelerate properly from this position to the contact point. If we look at the best one-handers, players like Stan Wawrinka, players like Tommy Robredo, Tommy Haas, Richard Gasquet, Roger Federer as well, they all have a very similar position when they reach that power position, that back position that we often talk about here at Top Tennis Training. So this back position for the one-hander, when we look at the best one-handers in the world, they're reaching a position similar to this. Now there are three keys that I want you to focus on when you're hitting that one-handed backhand and trying to reach a good power position. Key number one, this right shoulder, if you're a right-handed player, is almost touching my chin. So my chin is resting above my right shoulder. What this ensures is that I've got a full unit turn in that preparation phase. So if we imagine the quarters down there now, as I'm preparing for this one-hander, my shoulder is turning sideways onto the net and I'm having my chin resting above this right shoulder. This will ensure that I have that unit turn so that I can uncoil as I make contact. Step number two, we want to feel that our racket head is higher than our grip level in that power position. Now reaching a position similar to this will ensure that you have firstly leverage in the racket head and the hand. Now what exactly is leverage? Leverage is basically force over that ball. You're using your racket and your hand as a lever over the oncoming ball. So the oncoming ball has force on it and you need something to actually have force over that oncoming object, the ball. And this will be created by having the racket head higher in the grip so that when we actually start the acceleration phase forward, we have space and we have distance to accelerate that racket. If my racket is down here and my goal is to hit with power from here to here, I have very little space to accelerate that racket. Whereas if my racket heads in this position and I start that racket drop and I accelerate from that position, now the distance is much greater, but also in this position, to start the acceleration phase requires my muscles to work. Whereas from here, it's creating momentum with that racket drop. So it's almost like a pendulum. If we think of a pendulum, it goes down and up. It's that momentum. It's not being created by force. It's that forward and backward motion that's creating that movement. Now this applies also to the one-hander. If we have this pendulum effect of the racket being higher in the grip, and then as we drop, and start that forward phase, it's effortless for me to accelerate because I have that momentum. I'm creating momentum in the swing. Imagine on the serve, if you don't have a racket drop position and you didn't reach a trophy position. Imagine you just serve from this position here, toss the ball and then try and accelerate. The power would be extremely limited. On the serve, if we have that continuous motion, now we have the whole motion to accelerate and to generate that racket head speed. And this exact same thing happens on that one-hander. 
if I'm in that position here, where the racket head is higher than the grip, I now have space to accelerate, but I also have that momentum to accelerate effortlessly. What we want to feel is that we're able to generate power, but without forcing it time and time again. Because if we force it time and time again from this position, eventually we're gonna have an injury in the elbow, the wrist, or the shoulder, because of that extreme force that we're applying to hit that powerful shot. Whereas with this momentum from here, creating that momentum, it's effortless. And this is why all the one-handers, the best one-handers in the world, reach a, a position where the racket head is higher than the grip level. Now, if we look at Stan Wawrinka, the best one-hander possibly of all time, his racket head is directly above the grip. Now, this ensures that he has more space to accelerate. And also, if I hold the racket in this position now, I don't feel any stress in my wrist or any of the muscles. The racket head is basically being held very effortlessly. So when I'm preparing for my shot, if I'm preparing like this, there's no tension in my hand. The hand is tension free and I can be completely relaxed as I accelerate. Whereas if I'm holding the racket like this, for me now to hold the, the racket in this position without allowing it to drop, I have to now tense the muscles and the tendons and ligaments in my wrist. So from here, I'm tense and from here I'm relaxed. So it's also that relaxation and feeling that the muscles are relaxed when you do reach that back position. Now step number three, notice my non-hitting hand. This is holding the throat of my racket and this is ensuring that I'm reaching that position. But also my elbow is reaching a position almost at shoulder level. If I don't use that left hand, if I take it off too early, now again, all the stress goes back on my hitting hand. Whereas if I'm holding the throat and I'm using that left hand to help me prepare, now this becomes very easy for me to maintain that relaxation in the hitting hand. It's all about creating that forward momentum, but in a loose way, in a relaxed way, so that we can replicate it time and time again in the pressure of a match. So let's go over those steps once again. Number one, we want to feel that our right shoulder is touching the chin or close to touching the chin when we reach that power position. Number two, we want the racket head above the grip level. It doesn't matter if it's completely above like Stamorinka's, but we don't want it level because then we don't have that space to accelerate. And step number three, feeling that this left hand is preparing the racket head and helping me lift it up into that power position. So my left elbow is around shoulder height when I reach that power position. Now from here, if you reach a position similar to this, you'll feel that you can have that effortless power over the ball. Now if you want more help on your one-handed backhand, we have an entire course with one of the best one-handers of all time, Tommy Robredo. Now to watch the free videos from that course, click the link under this video, and there you can sign up to watch video number one, video number two, and video number three, with Tommy himself. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel also and turn on the notification bell so you get our latest videos as soon as we release them. Also click this like button. Also click the like button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment down below. Did you pick up something new from this video? Simon from TTT signing off. All the best guys. See you soon.